Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks a lot for having me. Um, my name is Robert. I would like to show you a small prototype today uh, I built recently, which is called Ask Wikidata. And what I tried to do there is I'm trying to run natural language queries on Wikidata. Um, shortly about me, I'm a senior software engineer currently at Wikimedia Germany. I'm part of the Wikibase suite team. Um, you can always reach me using those links on this slide and a short disclaimer. Um, I'm not a, a machine learning researcher nor data scientist. Um, I did lots of other software engineering jobs uh, until today. And also I never implemented search before. So this just keep in mind when uh, you look at this prototype, but nevertheless, I thought I'll share with you uh, what I built. Uh, so let's say you have this question. Who is the current mayor of Paderborn? And you would like to answer this question using Wikidata because that's a nice, reliable source. Um, I give away the answer. So it's actually Michael Dreyer at the moment. The party is CDU and uh, they are serving since 2014. So if we ask OpenAI's GPT-4, uh, who the current mayor of Paderborn is, we get the correct name. Uh, we also get the correct party. But the date is, well, it says it's he was elected on, in 2020. This is technically true because there was another election, but they're actually serving since 2014 already um, because they were re-elected. So we, also we don't have any sources here. We can't really verify the information easily from here, um, but not too bad what we get from GPT-4. Um, is if we ask Mistral, which is a small large language model, relatively small with 7 billion parameters uh, with openly licensed weights. Uh, so actually the weights have open source license. Um, if we ask this model, who is the current mayor of Paderborn, uh, it does not even get the name correct. And, uh, but it also excuses that it might not have access to real time information. So as we know, if we just ask a language model alone, uh, we have the nice property that we can ask questions in natural language. Uh, so it's quite an intuitive way to access data. But we might get outdated information. The response we get from the LLM is prone to hallucinations. And we also don't get references to any sources. And to address those issues, we can implement retrieval augmented generation. We have seen it in the last couple of days several times as well during this conference. So just shortly again, it's we still have the question from the user, but using the question, we access an up-to-date data source and embed parts of this data source into the um, prompt for the LLM. So we, we give this question a context uh, with this up-to-date information. We feed this into the LLM and with this, the response is able to contain up-to-date information. We can link to sources because we know what we, what we uh, included into the prompt and uh, we should have less hallucinations at this point. So what I want to show you now is uh, the prototype Ask Wikidata, which I built in my free time, even though Wikimedia Germany has supported me doing this. Uh, part of this is also me being here now. Um, this is working with open source software only. So there's no third party APIs or anything involved. We will use the Mistral um, model the Mistral uh, large language model, as said, it has an Apache 2 license for its weights, at least, if whether this is open source, uh, is we can discuss about it, but it's the best we can get at the moment, as far as I know. And um, the system I will present to you runs on consumer-grade GPUs. So I made it run on a three years old NVIDIA graphics card with only eight gigabyte of RAM. Um, this worked quite well. And you can also test the system as you will see later on a Google Colab, even with a free trier, um, you can run this. Okay, um, the answers we get are going to be based on 13,000 city items of Wikidata. So I'm using a limited data set over here. Um, yeah, for the sake of this being a prototype. Okay, so how does the architecture look? Um, we still have the question, as mentioned, from the user. Um, 
we create using an embedding model, we would create an embedding. So that's basically a vector representing the meaning of the question using this vector. We will look up in the Wikidata items uh, we have, the 13,000 just mentioned, uh, for items which match the meaning of the question. Then we get quite lots of them and we use a re-ranker model in a second step to actually look at those things we retrieved and re-rank them in order to say, okay, which chunks are the ones most likely answering the question of the user and only the most likely ones uh, we add into the prompt of the LLM, feed this into the LLM, and then we get a response. Let's look a bit into the details. So how does the data from Wikidata go into our database? This is a pre-processing step. Um, we put these Wikidata items as text uh, into the database. And at the same time, we generate embeddings for those. For the embeddings, I'm using a model um, released from the uh, Beijing Academy of AI, which is also freely available and an open source license. Um, the actual text items I'm creating from Wikidata items look like this. So uh, quite similar to the approach uh, Gizin IT uh, used. So the triples uh, become sentences. So in every triple will create a line, will create one sentence. So we have Parabon, the item, shares border with is uh, the property. And the value is Hüffelhof in this case. Um, and already we see here at this point, uh, the answer for our question, for our initial question is being given away. But at the moment, it's just part of this, our database. Um, those documents now created are chunked uh, into document chunks. Uh, the chunk is the unit of retrieval, basically. So we will retrieve chunks from our database. We will calculate embeddings based on the chunks. So we will encode the meaning of this chunk, for example, uh, in one embedding or this chunk. Okay, so now basically uh, we created a search problem, right? Now the problem is now really just to find the matching chunk uh, for our question. So how do we do this? We have the question and we calculate the embedding of the question. So the meaning, again, this is done by the embedding model. Um, this is basically the model helps us to, to um, explore similarity in, in texts. Uh, so this is an example. You can even try it out how this works on Hugging Face. So it's a different model, uh, but it's the same. It does the same thing in the end. So you can compare sentences to each other and you can calculate in the end to score how similar those sentences are uh, to each other. Um, now we created uh, lots of those embeddings in our database. And how do we now find the most similar ones, si most similar to our question? For this, um, we use an index here. I use uh, the so-called Annoy library uh, released by Spotify. This is also available as open source software. And this just basically searches the vector space and finds uh, the nearest neighbors for our questions embedding in order to find the chunks which are uh, probably answer the question of the user. So the so wiki art are text item chunks, which co might contain the information. Then we have the re-ranker model. Um, this is a different model also released by uh, Beijing Art Academy of uh, Artificial Intelligence. Um, why do we have this two-step process? It's quite simple. The embedding models are fast. You can create lots of embeddings with little time. Um, but they are not so accurate, and especially if you have data chunks, text chunks, which answer the question and you get a question over here, how similar is a question to the answer depends on the question, depends on the answer. So they might be not really like similar in a sense of similar, um, similar texts. So it's a good idea to get not only the one nearest neighbor, but lots of near neighbors. Um, and then within those near neighbors, we can using the re-ranker model, which is way better in comparing question to the potential answer chunks. Uh, we can re-rank uh, the chunks, sort them again, and only give uh, the most probable ones into the context in order to cope with the limited context size of large language models. We talked about this as already during this conference. 
Okay, so now we have the question with a given context, how does this look? First, we have kind of a system instruction for the language model. Um, so we tell the language model you're answering questions only on the given context, answer only on the given context. If the answer is not within the context, uh, say that you don't know the answer. Uh, so this is prompt engineering over here. Um, and then we give the context. Um, the context is now the chunks we retrieved from our database. You recognize them. And also here, like giving away the answer already. And the last part of our prompt is the actual question entered by the user. Who is the current mayor of Paderborn? Then this goes into the language model, obviously. Um, we will use uh, in this prototype as said already, we use a Mistral 7 billion parameter model. Uh, we used a quantized version, quantized down to four bit. So the originally 32 bit or 13, uh, 16 bit, sorry, uh, floating point numbers are quantized down to four bit values. And so this model uh, fits into, I think even less than five gigabyte of GPU RAM. And then in the end, ta-da! we will have a response. So I think that's a good moment for a demonstration. I have a notebook over here, which loads the system, uh, the Ask Wiki data system. So what the whole notebook does is it, it clones the system from GitHub, uh, installs the required dependencies, unpacks some caches uh, because the pre-processing steps are quite computational intensive. Uh, it generates a data set, so it creates the text re representations. In the end, it's TXT files uh, based on the wiki data items. And then this is a Python code to actually load the system. Uh, we configure ask wiki data with this config. So we configure how big our chunks are going to be, how many bytes will be in one, how many bytes of text will be in one chunk. Uh, whether the chunks should overlap, um, how the annoy index, uh, how many trees are created in there, how many chunks we will retrieve uh, from the database, how many chunks the re-ranker should put into the language model in the end, and what kind of models we are using. Um, actually, those models may be also worth mentioning are the smallest ones. Uh, so uh, the those models are available are available in small, base, and large. Uh, so obviously they become bigger uh, and and more powerful and uh, also more computation intensive. But at the moment it even works with the smallest version. Same for the re-ranker. And I ran the cell already. So Wikidata setup uh, started already because at this part um, the model gets loaded into the GPU. This takes a bit of time. Uh, as you can see, we filled our GPU already with almost eight gigabyte of memory here. I want to spare you the waiting time, but now it's online, ready to accept requests. And if we now ask the question, who is the current mayor of Paderborn? Since when? I run the cell. It retrieved, re-ranked, generated, and we get the answer. The current mayor of Paderborn is Michael Dreyer since 2014. Also, we get some sources, uh, links to the Wikidata items. We get five sources now. This is because um, the re-ranking model selected five chunks to be the most probable to answer the question. Um, yeah, one of them is uh, Paderborn. OK. Um, if you want to give this a try, this is, this is all released. Um, you can uh, find it on my GitHub. It's RTI uh, for Robert Tim slash Ask Wikidata. You can also just search on GitHub for Ask Wikidata. Um, also, as said, as promised, there is a Google Colab notebook ready to try this without installing anything. You can try it right in your browser uh, in the free Colab, Google Colab tier. So you don't need to buy or subscribe anything over there. Um, yes. So obviously we have limitations with such a prototype. Um, the text items we generate at the moment, some of them definitely contain useless information, even though uh, we started uh, filtering already. So we have <laughs> uh, stuff in there like Paderborn is capital of Paderborn and Paderborn, the Commons Gallery is Paderborn. And Paderborn is located in the administratorial entity Paderborn, uh, which definitely uh, needs some tuning over there. Um, the language model sometimes breaks out of the context, uh, which is definitely a problem. So uh, it tries sometimes to answer the question 
not based on the context, uh, but based on training data, which is exactly not what we want. So this is a problem for the system. And of course, uh, it's quite limited at the moment as we only look at a very small fraction of Wikidata uh, with our 13,000 city items. So what could the future bring? Definitely there's lots of room for optimizations, the chunks to retrieve. You've seen the numbers. Uh, there's uh, lots of room to play around with the chunking itself. Could be rethought. Uh, the we could re-chunk before re-ranking. So maybe the re-ranker should look at individual lines, individual facts, individual triplets before feeding the LLM in order to reduce the noise and provide more information from different sources maybe in one context. Um, the text generation could be reworked and uh, improved. So abstract Wikipedia maybe could help there. I don't know, did not look too much into it, but it sounds like similar. Um, definitely scaling mentioned already. So. Um, I'm really curious actually at which point uh, which limits are hit uh, with a wiki with a massive amount of data wiki data has so uh, how far can we get I would like to look into fine tuning the language model to really stay in the context so there are question answer models uh, which have a different architecture which might be helpful there or maybe we can really force uh, with question answer data sets uh, language models to not remember anything from the training data but really only stay in the context the embedding re-ranker model can be fine-tuned as well to improve the performance or maybe maybe we should not generate semantic data into text and maybe we should access a graph directly um, that's also part of the future exploration, definitely. So cool. Um, that's the end of my talk. Um, let's stay in touch. Um, if you found this interesting, uh, feel free to contact me. Um, and yeah, curious to hear what you think, whether you have any questions. And thanks for yeah, your Robert, attention I'm until here. I'm sure there are there is at least one question because that's uh, mine. Um, why is the re-ranking model so why do you need the re-rank step in and how is that better what are the yeah how how can the re-rank uh, outperform the, the the first search yeah definitely so uh that's a really good question the um i said i'm not a, a model language model uh, architect so i can't go into the details but what i understood uh, is really the the performance and the quality of the models. So the embedding model is really fast in creating embeddings, uh, like uh, extracting the basic meaning uh, of a sentence or set of text. Um, while the re-ranker model using a different architecture takes way more time to do the similar thing, but does it way better. So it really, yeah, understand the language way better. So like, I think simply we can think of it like where the embedding model only looks at the word similarity and a bit more um, like this, uh, the re-ranker model can really also, as I mentioned before, can really see that the, the text chunk might be the answer to this question. So even gets a similarity between question and answer while question and answer are quite different texts technically the embedding model does not get it that well so that's why we can fastly get lots of chunks using the embedding model and uh, which are pretty similar and then limit the uh, amount um, of chunks we give actually into the context thanks do we have an online uh... we, we do We have two questions online, I think. Um, have you looked into Qdrunt to do similarity searches on your indexed vectors? No. That sounds interesting. It's an alternative to annoy. It's um, something in the in the chat that you can read. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know what it what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the other question is, would such a large language Which model language? only work for the languages for which, which the text was generated? Uh, thank you again for Qdrunt once. I will look into this. Um, I can't see the chat at the moment, but I will look, look this up. Will the language model only work for the text generated? So I think not even that, also the language model has to be trained on the language. Um, so in order, the we really rely on the kind of 
reasoning the language model does uh, while uh, reading the facts and getting out the answer to the question at the same time. So the language model really needs to be trained on, on the language used in there. And then, of course, while generating the text items or, or from Wikidata items, uh, we definitely need to use in the, the matching language as well. Yeah, so the system is really tied to certain languages and you explicitly need to support each language. Does this answer the question? Uh, and I have a question myself. Um, do you use the, the Wikidata API or do you use yes, the, yes. the triple store? Okay, so, so but, but because this means that we can easily uh, change it to using a semantic media wiki API so we can basically try the same thing from your from your software to interface with with some semantic media wiki installation right definitely yeah so it's uh, if you look in the github there's um the text representation python file this is the one accessing the um the wiki data api so at this point uh, there's some request at some point yeah over here um you can uh, exchange this definitely with with other APIs. Uh, yeah, take this implementation, the text representation pie uh, with a grain of salt. It's completely ChatGPT generated, by the way. Um, <laughs> but it works. works. Thanks, Robert, for your presentation. Cool. Cool. Thanks very much.